Good morning. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading this morning from Luke chapter 24, verses 4 through 6, the New International Version. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fight, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. As we journey to Calvary, we thank you for the ultimate gift. Lord, we thank you for the empty tomb. And we thank you for the ultimate love of allowing your son to take on human flesh. To die for our sins, Lord. We pray for this body of Christ that is in this room today, Lord. We pray for all the believers the world over, Lord. And we pray that if there's anyone amongst us or anywhere who doesn't truly know of your love, of your grace, of your mercy, that the things that will be said today, the hymns that will be sung today, Lord, the messages that will be conveyed, Lord, that they will touch those people's hearts so we may all truly know you and collectively share your love with others. Lord, we pray for everyone here today. We ask blessings as Brother Charlie brings the message. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is 273, Christ Arose. We'll sing the first, second, and third verse. Let's stand, please, and sing together. you love that line? Bum, 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 bum. Well, I tell you what, that gets you going on Easter morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Welcome to our service of worship this morning. We are glad 
that you are here with us today. We had a big crowd in Sunday school. Had uh, 155 is what uh, Lynn uh, let me know this morning, so we're thankful for that. Uh, the boys and girls, they found all the eggs on Wednesday night. Maria told me 800 in record time, so good job. <laughs> Boys and girls, we appreciate that. If you're a visitor or a guest with us today, we want you to feel right at home and welcome. We are glad that you're here in God's house uh, th this morning. Now, in a few moments, we'll have a time of fellowship, and that's a great opportunity for our church members and regular attenders to make you feel right at home and welcome uh, this morning. Just a couple announcements to make you aware of. Uh, join us uh, on Wednesday for uh, Family uh, Fellowship Night. And I'm looking at the menu, amen, because it's potluck supper night. So bring something uh, for you and a friend and uh, come and, and join us for that. That starts at 6. We'll have pizza for our younger appetites, so come and join us for that. The, our adults will be continuing our study on the uh, disciples, the 12 disciples. We'll be looking at another group of brothers uh, this uh, Wednesday, the Sons of Thunder, uh, James and John. And so come and join us for that. Also, this is the season of, uh, that we uh, recognize our, our North American uh, missionaries, our home mission board, and so we do that by collecting the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, and so we'll be doing that uh, not only today, but for the next two uh, Sundays, so if you want to participate in that, we encourage you to do that. Uh, there's envelopes in the foyer up here on the communion table. Also be praying for uh, Jacob. He's going to be... Uh, Preaching for me next uh, Sunday morning. Amen? <laughs> Amen. All right. It's now time for our, our fellowship time, so let's stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. <laughs>
Lord is risen today. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I love seeing all of you guys. Um, so at this time of year, we see lots of, we, lots of Easter eggs. Last night, me and Tyler and Lucy died Easter eggs. Have y'all done that? Um, Easter egg hunt. See any of you been on an Easter egg hunt? Yes, we found eggs with candy. Wednesday night, when y'all found those 800 so fast, I asked Tyler and Lucy, can y'all pick up your toys and dirty laundry that fast? <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Um, I've seen some of you had a glow-in-the-dark egg hunt at night. That's fun. Have any of you found a golden egg on the egg hunt? You have? I saw you yesterday. You did. You found that one at the country club. You did. Um, well, I brought an Easter egg with me. So I have, since I have my microphone in the Bible, I have some helpers. So JP, will you stand up and hold that egg and show it to him? Yes. Okay. What do y'all see on the egg? A cross. Okay. So as I as JP holds it, and Ethan's going to help in a second, I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Matthew. So the cross, it reminds us, right? We talked about this on Good Friday, too, that Jesus willingly went to Calvary to die on the cross to pay for our sins. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us, okay? Um, so, JP, open up the cross, open up the egg of the cross for us, and then you can... Let's see what's inside. Y'all watch. See what's inside. And y'all tell me. It's another egg. But what, would it, what does it look like? It is an egg. All right. You can pass it to. And you can still have the cross one. All right. It's a stone. Okay. Um, in Matthew, a man named Joseph took the body of Jesus. He wrapped it in clean linen cloth. And he placed it in a new tomb that he had cut out of rock. And then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance of a tomb, and he went away. And then the guards, they even sealed the tomb to make it extra secure. Well, then, on the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb, and then there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and he sat on it. So the tomb was open, so... Easton, will you open? Mm -hmm. 
Wait, it does open. <laughs> it's gonna open. <laughs> Twist it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Cats. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It is, it was kind of stuck, okay? All right, we'll show them what's inside now that we got it open. Easton, you show it to them. What's in it? Nothing. Nothing. So the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has what risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. So the angel invited the women into the tomb to come and see. And then go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. And what I love about that is the tomb, it was open. That stone was rolled away. Not to let Jesus out. No, it was to invite the women in to come and see, and it invites us in to come and see what the Lord has done. That invitation is still open to us to come and see what God has done. Because praise God, the story of the cross, it doesn't end with the cross that JP's holding. It doesn't end in death. It ends with that empty tomb. It ends in life. And through the resurrection of Jesus, God offers us that eternal life. And the invitation is open to us to come and see what God has done. Okay? All right, let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you so much for every um, boy and girl that is sitting right here. What a blessing they are. Um, and just today, we exalt you, and we just thank you as our loving Heavenly Father, full of mercy and grace, who just sent your Son, because you love us so much, um, to pay the price of our sin that we can never pay, to offer us um, that eternal life, and to make a way for us to go to heaven and live eternally with you. Um, I just thank you for the power that raised Jesus from the dead, and that's the same power that um, lives inside of us as um, we just have eternal life and have your pre access to your presence um, continually all the time. Um, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. Um, be with us as we continue in our worship to just um, magnify your name, and it's in your holy name I pray. Amen. <laughs>
like on an airplane, I need an oxygen mask to drop down. <laughs> Our off tour hymn is 269. He lives. Let's stand, please, and sing together. <laughs> I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me. Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. No wonder is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. We've got a couple of anniversaries we're going to talk about this morning. About five years ago, me and Timmy Gates pulled a switcheroo on Cody Burkhalter, and he prayed for the first time on Easter Sunday five years ago. <laughs> he said, we threw him to the wolves. And then God led to this church a special guy 20 years ago, April 1st, Brother Charlie Wilson. And, of course, the biggest anniversary we celebrate today, 2,024 years ago, Jesus busted up out of that ground, <laughs> looked around, told Satan, you can't touch this, <clears throat> folded his napkin and said, I'll be back. I ain't through yet. So we worship that today. Y'all don't mind. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for what you did. 2,024 years ago, how uh, you hung on that cross, died for us, set in, and set in the gap for us, Father. We love you, Lord, for all these things. And right now, as we give back to you just a small token of what we owe you, Father, that you take it and you further your word into a lost and dying world. We love you, Lord, for all things, but especially what you did on that cross. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
there was a joke going around during the fellowship time that Jacob was also going to be out next week and that I would be preaching. So <laughs> I figured I would say a couple of words now. That way I can't preach two weekends in a row. It's against my contract. Um, it, it's interesting when, when you read the, the Gospels and, and you see the, the different frames in which the, the Easter story are told. And you've seen people throughout years that have come back and told the story from the different, different perspectives, be it that of Mary or, or John or, or from you know, the guards and the different situations like that. And you've also probably read stories where uh, we've been compared to Judas at the Last Supper because Judas ate as well, you know, and, and the, the sins there are still forgiven by Jesus, you know, and that's a remarkable thing. This next piece that we're going to do is written from one of those perspectives, but it's really not one that I don't think many people fully consider, and it's of one of the criminals that was beside Jesus, you know, and you know, Jesus told him, you will be with me in paradise. And the, the words that condemned to die on a cross for crimes he had done, he was guilty, everyone could see. But his destiny was changed as he looked at Christ and said, when your kingdom comes, remember me. In paradise that day he stood, just like the Lord had said he would, surrounded by those who had gone before. He said, friends, how did you come? What are the deeds you have done? With tears in his eyes, I can hear his reply. There are no merits to my name, no works that I can claim. He who brought me here told me to say, I have come by the way of the cross. Each and every one of us come by the way of the cross. Our sins, our good deeds, our merits, our works, all are laid to the side because you've put your faith, your love, your trust, your life in the cross, in Jesus, in Christ. So if you're struggling with any of those things today, I hope these words touch you. I hope this service has touched you. I hope it brings you closer to knowing him and being truly of the cross. But his destiny was changed as he looked at Christ and said, When your kingdom comes, remember me. In paradise that day he stood, just like the Lord had said he would, surrounded by those who had gone before. One said, Friend, how did you come? What are the deeds you have done? With tears in his eyes, I can hear him reply. There are no merits to my name, no works that I can claim. He who brought me here told me to say,
Okay. It's been a while since I've had to turn around when I preach. Amen. I like that, though. Thank you, choir. Awesome job uh, this Sunday and last Sunday. Thank you for sharing of your gifts and talents with us. As y'all have told the, the story of Easter in song over the last two Sundays, we appreciate that. Uh, Brother uh, Gary uh, Patterson shares about his first service in his first church where he ever preached. He was young and he was inexperienced. It was a hot summer day at that country church, and about 40 folks had come to worship. It was one of those churches that didn't have air condition, and they had the, the windows open, and kind of that hot, no breeze of summer was, was in the church. But boy, he gave it his all. And you know, when he got through preaching, he said, not bad, Gary, that's, that's a pretty good sermon. Yet before he could catch his breath, a woman sprang up from the pew and began screaming. Brother Gary, he froze in place, and his first thought, man, was my sermon that bad? And then he thought, oh my goodness, they sent me to one of these country charismatic churches, and this lady speaking in tongues. And then all of a sudden, the lady began to sing, my mother, my mother, she's gone, she's dead. And Gary confessed, and he was gripped with fear because he thought, I've killed somebody in my first sermon. Please, Lord, don't let that be so. I've never done a funeral. This is not getting off to a good start. Because this is before cell phones and there was no phone on the, on the ground, somebody ran down to the corner store to call for help. But then amidst all the panic, suddenly a faint voice was heard. It was the woman who was allegedly dead. Her eyes opened and she was obviously puzzled and upset. And she looked up at her daughter with great concern. She said, hush, hush now, don't make a fuss hush. There definitely was a hush that morning. It was more like shock silence. And Brother Gary pondered on the power of the preached word to both kill and resurrect. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I invite you to turn to Mark's gospel. We're going to look at the gospel of Mark as he tells the gospel story of the resurrection. If you're using our pew Bible, you'll find our passage on page 1424, 1424, and I'll begin reading in verse 1. Mark records the story this way, it says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, Bought, brought spices so that they might come and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had just risen. They were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Looking up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, although Scripture tells us it was extremely large. Entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, wearing a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who has been crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, here is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. And they went out, and they fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had gripped them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, some of you might be surprised that I stopped reading from the gospel at that point. Now, I'm not sure which translation you are reading from or what type of footnotes or study notes that you have in your copy of God's Word, but scholars are in agreement that Mark's earliest text end in verse 8. Kind of a couple of weeks ago, we were talking when we were studying the book of Acts, how Luke seemed to kind of end the book of Acts in kind of an anticlimactic way. It's kind of like that lady in that hot country church where Mark said, hush, hush now, don't make a fuss. 
But I believe that Mark had other ideas. You see, he reported what the ladies and Peter told him, and he wrote it down. And I believe he felt like it was the rest of the disciples' responsibility to tell the story and keep the story going. After all, that's why we are here this morning in full force here to worship our Lord because we know what happened that day. And it's because of that promise that Sunday after Sunday, brothers and sisters in Christ gather in places of worship around the world, proclaim the promise and victory of the power of the resurrection. Amen? There are three just quick statements that I want us to look at and focus on this morning from our text. In verse 3, it said that Mary Magdalene, and then it gave us another Mary. There are a lot of Marys back then, amen? But these two Marys were, were making their way to the tomb, and maybe because they were downcast, maybe because they were, they, they were upset at what was going on, they just kind of broke the awkward silence. And one of them just kind of uttered, well, you know, who's going to roll the stone away? It's funny you should ask that, Mary. By resurrection power, Jesus rolled the stone away. And beloved, he's still rolling stones away today. Away from the graves that paralyze our lives. Graves of shame. Graves of pride. Gra graves of guilt, anger, addiction, and grief. We don't have the ability to roll the stone. But we don't have to worry about that because that's already been done for us. Because of what Jesus did for us on that first day of the week, on that first getting up morning, Jesus rolled that stone away by that resurrection power. And what else does Mark say? It says, looking up. How many times in life do we go around looking down at our situation, looking down at our problems, looking down at everything that gets us down. And Mark tells us to look up. And so they looked up, and they realized that their first issue had already been solved. The stone had been rolled away, even though it was extremely large. Beloved, try telling the Lord that your problem, your issue, your relationship, or your habit is too big, and look up, because he is already solving the problem. I think Lauren Daigle got some of her song titles from Mark 16, 3 and 4. You know, look up, child. He's still rolling stones. It's written right there in the gospel. Next, see what happens in verses 5 and 6. The angel says, who are you looking for? He is risen. He is not here. I like how Luke recorded it in the verses that Jed read at the beginning of our service. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Every time I make a trip to Pensacola, I go by CP's grave. I like to go there and tell him, tell him things, and I clean up around his stone. I, I pick up a few weeds. I say a few because my mom, Charlie Faye, lives about a mile and a half from the, from the cemetery, and she, she makes sure that the weeds get picked up. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, my, my nephew was on spring break, and mom didn't like the way that the the grass, there's too many weeds, so she and Cole went to Lowe's, and they got a pile of grass. Now, beloved, when you go to a cemetery with a shovel, <laughs> you don't realize how many people work in a cemetery, amen? So they laid out the grass, and the mom went, mom went to get a bucket of water at the house, and poor old Cole, 22-year-old Cole, was out there with a the shovel digging up the grass and laying side. He had about four workers coming up and said, buddy, what are you doing? But anyway... Be careful when you take a shovel to the graveyard, amen. But e even though when I go and, and visit uh, CP's grave, I, I probably cry more at his grave than I do any time when I'm there. But I tell you, it gives me comfort when I'm there as well. Because you see, the Apostle Paul says that the same resurrection power that rose Jesus up from the grave is the same power. It's going to raise us up. Amen? It's the same power that gives us the, the, what we need each and every day. 
1 Corinthians 6, 14 is that verse. It's that promise of the day that we celebrate. You ever wonder what Mary and Mary did with those spices? You know, did they write in Aramaic on a sign, hey, free spices, you ain't here. You know, I mean, do you ever wonder what they did with that? You know, there's no record of that. But there is a record that it says that from now on, we're to be the aroma. We're to be the fragrance of Christ. So they left those spices for anointing and went out from that tomb telling the story of what happened. And now, around the world, churches are full today celebrating that same victory that happened long, long ago. And the last phrase that I want to touch on this morning is tucked away in verse 7. It says, go tell his disciples and Peter. I think there are two reasons why Mark says that. One is that Peter, as we know, had denied Jesus just the day before. The day before his, uh, his crucifixion. And, and, and Jesus wanted Peter to know he was alive. The other reason I think it's there is that scholars tell us, since Mark's gospel was the first gospel that was written, that Peter was his major source to his gospel. But listen what it says. Go tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you. Hear that? He is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him just as he told you. On the greatest getting up morning, we're told that there will never be a day, there will never be a life situation, there will never be a problem that we encounter that Jesus hadn't already gone ahead of us to take care of. Amen? I don't know what we're going to face tomorrow, but Jesus does. Amen? And he's already gone ahead of us to take care of it. Somebody disappointed you, he knows what that is like. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Don't get caught up in the drama. Jesus will work it out in our relationships. I know nobody's got drama in here this morning. Amen? But don't worry about it. Put it to a side because Jesus has already gone ahead and he's going to work that out for us. You know, nobody wants to hear of a difficult medical prognosis, but he's already gone ahead of us and taken care of it. When we put our faith in him, we know that we can be healed of our sickness of sin and whatever medical conditions that we might have. If it's his will, he will heal us in this lifetime. If it's not in his will, we will be made whole and complete and fully healed. And we're with him in glory. Because he has already gone ahead of us. And we will see him just as he told us. Death has been swallowed up in victory. That's why people come on this day, because we know of the Easter victory that happened. That's the word that has filled this church today. Death has been defeated. Hell has been defeated. The grave has lost its sting. The final enemy has been conquered. I like what John said. He folded up his napkin. He told Satan, don't touch this. Amen. That's what it's all about. Because of the resurrection power that happened in that borrowed tomb is the same power that's available to you and me each and every day. Love it, all we got to do is claim it. What about it? Are you ready to do it? Because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He has washed it white as snow. I love two stanzas of that invitation hymn that we're going to sing in a few moments. It says, For nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim, I wash my garments white in the blood 
of Calvary's lamb. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. I don't know what the crowd's going to be like on Wednesday night. I don't know what the crowd's going to be like next Sunday. I, I don't know if you caught that. I'm going to be in Phoenix. But, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the crowd, I don't know what the crowd's going to be like two weeks from now, a month from now. But, beloved, because of what Jesus did with his resurrection power, our lips should never quit repeating that story that Jesus paid it all amen he paid it all there's nothing that we can do he's done it all for us that's the victory of Easter of what he's accomplished so let's go out and tell everybody that wonderful story amen amen let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much. What a wonderful day that we get to celebrate. The greatest victory that's ever been accomplished. But Lord, we don't only celebrate that today. Because of what you've done on the cross, for what you've done in that empty tomb, we can celebrate that 24-7 every day. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for what you've done. Lord, thank you for the power of resurrection. The same power that rose you, raised you up from the grave, Lord, gives us the power that we need each and every day. And it's the power that raises us up to abundant and eternal life. Lord, thank you for that. Lord, thank you for the miracle that happened and Lord for the miracle that we can be a part of Lord we love you and we thank you in Christ's holy name I pray amen our hymn of invitation and response this morning is Jesus paid it all he has done that if you have a decision that you want to share this morning it might be to profess your faith for the very first time publicly it might be to uh uh, join our church membership. It might be to rededicate your life. It might be to come to the altar and pray. Whatever decision God is laying upon your heart, you do that as we stand and sing together. come uh, Wednesday night. It's going to be a great potluck. Look at this crowd. Amen. So uh, come and join us uh, Wednesday night uh, for our fellowship meal at 6 and our activities for our, our children, our students, and our adults begin at 645. Go out today. Proclaim. May your lips always repeat what Jesus Christ did for us. The resurrection power 
is available to us all. We're going to close our service. Instead of singing the doxology uh, this morning, we're going to sing the He Lives message. from the dark domain and he lives forever with the saints to reign he arose he arose hallelujah Christ arose he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way he lives he lives salvation to impart you ask me how i know he lives he lives within my heart have a great week happy easter he is risen